the Epcot International Festival of the Arts. Our next presentation is 3D Storytelling at Walt Disney World, in which you can learn how props and decorations help tell every Disney story. Please welcome the seminar presenter, Steve Probus. Hello and welcome. I'm hoping that you've had the opportunity to experience some of the uh, things here at the 2019 Festival of the Arts, where we're celebrating art, entertainment, and food. Most important is food, of course. Uh, and there's a lot of artistic food here as well, so you can consume that or you can take it home. There's lots of art here and there's lots of artists here, so I hope you take the advantage of doing that. Um, we'd like to start our program by talking about what is a prop? Does anybody know what a prop is? A prop is a form of, formerly known as a theatrical prop. It's, it's actually an object used on a stage by an actor. That's generally what we think of it as. Uh, and during a performance, either on stage or on the screen. In practical terms, a prop is considered to be anything that's movable or portable and distinctive from an actor, scenery, costumes, or light. So if this moves, then it's not a prop. Actually, it is. This jacket is a prop as well. This glass unicorn. I know where that's from. We'll get to that later. Okay, so we're going to talk about decorating as well. Props and decorating. Decorating is when you add something to an object or to a place or an area, and especially to make it more attractive or to tell a story. You all know about decorating because you decorate for the holidays, you decorate for parties, you decorate for lots of things. So we're going to talk about a very important storyteller. To say Walt Disney was a great storyteller is sort of like saying Michael Jordan was a, a great basketball player. He certainly was much more than that. So the idea is that Walt was, in fact, and is one of the most influential storytellers in history. We know that's true from lots of the media and lots of the art that's out there. Now the first thing that Walt said that makes a good story man is a good memory. Okay, I'm not a good story man, but I can, in fact, do things with uh, the elements that I have at my disposal. A good story man never forgets a situation. Everything should be related to human experiences. Sometimes we actually relate it to animal experiences. And we know that because we have a lot of characters that are animals. Also, Walt was committed to stories and everything that he did. In fact, he was also very innovative in doing things and creating ways in which to be able to tell stories. When he started with animation, he wanted to make sure he was telling a complete story so that the characters were not just there haphazardly. Now, prior to Walt getting involved in animation, there were animated cartoons, but they were right in between the feature that you went to see at the movie. So it was just pure entertainment. So they really didn't relate to one another. So Walt said, hey, we need to do this and we need to relate. So he, in fact, did that. So all of the things that he did related. Now, it's very important that we understand that Walt started out with Disneyland and a whole story that went behind and was influential for everything that happens at Disneyland. And it happens at every one of our parks. So if you look before, you'll see that there is a, a dedication plaque for Disneyland. That was his first park. And he says, to all who come to this happy place. Now we say these words over and over again throughout Walt Disney, both here and around the world, because we do welcome you. And it says, Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here you may savor the challenge and the promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideas, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. That's what Disneyland was all about. And he says that with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. And I think that Walt succeeded in doing that in everything that he did. And I think the Walt Disney Company certainly has succeeded in doing that everywhere. Now, that was very successful in 1955, but in 1971, Walt brought his world here. 
And so, in 1971, we opened Walt Disney World. Now, the dedication was very similar, but it was also very important to recognize that this was a dedication to Walt Elias Disney because Walt had passed away before we opened Walt Disney World. So Roy, da Roy Disney gave the, the dedication, and he says that Walt Disney World brings joy and inspiration and new knowledge to all who come to this happy place, a magic kingdom where young at heart of all ages can laugh and play and learn together. And that was certainly the inspiration that Walt wanted to achieve from the very beginning. And I certainly believe that he has done that. Does everybody agree with that? Can we all enjoy things together? Yeah. Young people, older people, and older, older people? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure where I fit in there, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the idea is that there's a story. So when you go into our parks, there's already a story in mind. And so when you go to our attractions, then you need to make sure that you understand you don't need to read it, you don't need a script, but there's a story behind it. So when you're at Magic Kingdom, you have to understand this is what it's all about. It's about adventure. Now, in addition to that, we have a story for Tomorrowland. There's a story for Frontierland. There's a story for Fantasyland and Adventureland. And we're going to talk a little bit about Fantasyland and Adventureland. In Fantasyland, it's the happiest kingdom of all. And this is what Walt thought in 1955. Here is the world of the imagination, hope and dreams. It's the timeless land of enchantment, the age of chivalry. Magic and make-believe are reborn. And fairy tales come true. We know that. Fantasyland is dedicated to the young and the young at heart. To those who believe, and when you wish upon a star, your dreams do come true. That was Walt's dedication in 1955 for Fantasyland. Now, Adventureland. Here in Adventureland is adventure, romance, mystery, tropical rivers silently flowing into the unknown because you don't know where you're going. The unbelievable splendor of exotic flowers, the eerie sound of the jungle, with eyes that are always watching. This is Adventureland. Now it's interesting because now we're gonna go into something that is at Adventureland. Has anybody been to Skipper Canteen? What land is it in? Wow, that's good. It's Adventureland, wow, it all sort of fit together. Adventureland, it's an Adventureland because it is an adventure. Anybody know a little bit about the story of the Skipper Canteen? Actually, if you blog this, it'll tell you everything you need to know, but I'm gonna give you a little uh, heads up. The Jungle Skipper Canteen is really originally for skippers of the Jungle Cruise. Now there's a whole history here of uh, Dr. Albert Falls. And that, anybody heard of Dr. Albert Falls? Have you been, anybody been on Jungle Cruise before? Okay, a few people, you should go on it. Okay, it's a lot of fun and the skippers are just fantastic. But the idea is that the Jungle Skippers needed a place to eat and this was the offices this was operated by the Jungle Navigational Company. Um, and the idea is that this is where they went and had lunch. But what happened over time is that the Jungle Crews realized that uh, um, when they were taking people on adventures, they were hungry too. So uh, when, when Dr. Albert Falls um, retired, his daughter took over, Alberta. There's actually a picture of Alberta, uh, if you look. It's a little abstract if you've been there. But Alberta it, uh, took over the place and she says, you know what? We should invite our guests who are on our jungle cruise to come up and enjoy the food with us because they are our guests. And so that's really where it started from. Okay. So as you enter the Jungle Skipper Canteen, it really is just like the Skipper's lunch space. It's their canteen and their mess hall. So as you look here, there's bulletin boards, and there's a lot of messages there, and very interesting messages, and there's artifacts that they have collected over the years as they've been um, traveling through Asia and Africa and South America. So this is a wide shot. And if you look at the, uh, this is the mess hall, this is where they eat, and this is where you can come and eat and enjoy the wonderful exotic flavors that are available here. Now, you'll say, well, what do you have to do with this, Steve? Where's the props and the dressing? Everything that's in there that's on the walls, that is uh, 
on the balconies that's in the ceiling is a prop or a decorating piece or a decoration. The idea is that we tell stories and props help to give life to the story. What they do is they give believability. It's sort of like going into a model home. Anybody been into a model home before? Anybody looked in a model home before? When you look into a model home, what is the story about the people who live there? Okay, they like blue, they like pink, and uh, everything is perfect. Anybody live there? No, we don't. We live in a world that has lots of things in it that tell about us. That's exactly what we do with props and decorating. So, when you look at this, you can see that even the balcony areas, we have offices there. There's a story of the people who inhabit this space. And then there's also some tributes. Anybody been to the lost and unfound? What does that mean? It means that it was lost but nobody found it. And so we in fact added that in here. There's also many pieces in here from travels around. And you'll look in the lost and unfound and you'll see that there's actually a pith helmet with a dart in it. Okay, we're not sure where that occupant is who actually had that before, but he's, he's gone now. Now this is a very important room because does anybody know what SEA is? Anybody? What? Good. Okay, no? Okay. Uh, it's the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. It's a secret society that is created by the Walt Disney Company. And the SEA has lots of members that are worldwide. In fact, we have attractions worldwide that are dedicated to these people. Okay, so this is actually the special room, it's the SEA room, and there's actually a bookcase that opens. So it's a magical doorway that opens up and, and takes you into the special room that Dr. Albert Falls would have the members of the SEA come and they would in fact have their meetings there. But Alberta said, hey, you know what, let's everybody eat there. So she opened it up. But there's lots of wonderful artifacts in there. There's things that the, the uh, SEA members have brought back and put into display here. So there's some close-ups here that show you some of the actual items. There's a lot of very interesting things. If you go there, that's the story we're telling. These are the pieces that came from the SEA. Now, this is another very important room. This was actually uh, the, um, the Falls private dining room. So this is where they had their own things. And Alberta said, you know what, it's okay. We're going to invite our guests to come and have lunch here as well. And so these, you'll see things that they personally had and they treasured are in these display cases. And some of them are available to, to actually just touch. Okay, there's more um, in the room. There's the uh, ones from uh, Mrs. Falls. And there's also a ship or one of the jungle cruise boats that are there because it is a dedication, in fact, to the Jungle Cruise. Now we're going to jump from there. We're going to go lots of places today. I'm not going to tell you the story of all of one attraction because it's really not fair. So we're just going to jump in and go all over the place. So here we are at the Pirate's Bazaar. Has anybody been to the Pirate's Bazaar? If you've been on Pirates of the Caribbean and you leave the attraction, you go into the Pirate's Bazaar. The idea here is that the props and the decorating here are all of the things that the pirates have gathered in their plunging around the world. So they're actually dedicated in certain areas. There's an Asian section, there's an Australian section, there's an African section. So all of the things that they have collected, they sort of categorize those. Now, do pirates really do that? Ours did. Okay, that's our story. Okay, now we're going to go into Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Now, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, in fact, is a functioning railroad in what land? Oh, wow. You guys are good. Okay. Uh, so the idea is that if you're going to have, in fact, uh, um, a mountain and you're going to be mining, you need mining equipment. You need gunpowder and you need mine cars and you need picks and axes and lots of other things like that. And if you go closer, there's more of a story as you go in, and you'll see some of the things that are currently being used by the occupants of that space. Now, has anybody seen this vignette before? 
Has anybody been on the train, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad? Anybody seen the floating man over in the tub? Yes, you've seen him. Well, right opposite him is a saloon that flooded. This is what's inside of there. Next time you ride that, see if you can see who's winning that poker game. Now we're going to go into Enchanted Tales with Belle. Now, this is in Maurice's uh, workshop. Now, you'll notice that there's some strange looking tools here because Maurice is sort of a strange kind of person. So the idea is he wouldn't lose, use just regular tools, but sometimes that's what was available to him. But a lot of times he would make them for himself. In addition to that, in the Enchanted Tales with Belle, what is Belle doing? She's reading to you. So there's lots of books. These books help to tell that story. Now, Haunted Mansion. Now, how many ghosts are in Haunted Mansion? Okay, how many are serial killers? One. Okay. <laughs> Did you know that? Okay, you'll have to discover that on your own. No, uh, the idea is that uh, we made some changes in 2007 because there's a new um, inhabitant there, and the, her name is Constance. Her name is Constance Hatchaway. And Constance, it's very interesting because all the things that you can discover about Constance, which you can see when you go into the attic, will tell you a little bit about her. She was married five times. And all of her husbands died. And it's interesting because if you look very closely, there's a, uh, she had five husbands and each one successfully were more successful and therefore she got more money. She was an opportunist. And the idea was that she was waiting until she got everything that she wanted. But she really didn't care about all the prizes and all of the wedding gifts because she was just ready for the next one. If you look here, this is uh, the Marquis. That was one of her husbands. And here's the props that are dedicated to her wedding and her wedding gifts. Now, we also have other ghosts. Now, we know that uh, the item that Constance used was what? An axe. Wow. Here's another person with an axe. So there's two people here with an axe. We won't go into that story. But the idea is that there's more stories behind this. Now, I show you this picture of this base because when we were doing the rehab of this project in 2007, we were in the music room and I happened to be in New York working and I found this base and I said, you know what? This is what we need in the music room because it helps to tell the story. But unfortunately, our budget did not allow us for, to do this. And so what I had to do is I had to uh, convince our producers and uh, creative directors that it this would fit very well into this particular environment. So, I spent six months following the guy around who had this until we finally were able to, um, to get the funds to be able to put that in there because it was never part of our budget to begin with. Now, this is very interesting. Anybody been to Kingdoms Crossing the Magic Kingdom? It's probably one of our first restrooms that we put props in. Isn't that interesting? Because generally we don't do that. You might know whose satchel that is? Flynn Rider. Flynn Rider. Wow, see, you guys know everything. So, Flynn, that's on the outside. And if you look on the inside, on the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see some of the, the art uh, tools that, in fact, she used. Now, this is in the women's restroom. Okay, now we're going to go to Typhoon Lagoon. As I said, we're going to be jumping around. This is, in fact, the story behind Typhoon Lagoon. It's very simplified, and it was uh, originally presented and still presented as a Burma Shave sign. It says, A furious storm once roared across the sea, catching ships in its path, helpless to flee. Instead of certain and watery doom, the wind swept them here to Typhoon Lagoon. This is a boat that, in fact, got tossed up here. So this is a prop. A prop can be something as small as a pencil or a pen. It can be a truck or a submarine. This is a close-up of the props that are actually in that boat. So the idea is that these were turned topsy-turvy upside down as they were tossed and thrown into this area. Now, this is another area in the Crush and Gusher attraction. And this shows 
part of the props that were in fact strewn about uh, and turned upside down. And here are some of the crates that were part of the Tropical Amity uh, Company. Another thing that we do is we do props in carts. So we're themed out and there's props that tell the story. Whether it is someone who is selling hot dogs and who is a surfer and sells hot dogs on the side, or whether it's someone selling coffee or Madame Leota selling incantations and artifacts, or in other locations throughout our property. Now at Disney's Blizzard Beach, Teambo Springs is a family raft ride. And this, when we first opened this on the left, we realized that we needed to tell more of a story there. So if you look to the left, the story is, it's an empty avalanche hut. It's a hut that in fact the snow has crashed in. So we put in the rest of the props to tell the story. That's how we do it with props and decorating. We also, in area development, sometimes we make photo ops that are part of the story as well. On the left side of the screen, you'll see this is Sunny's sled lot. And at Sunny's sled lot, you can buy a sled, even though there's no snow anymore. Now Epcot, we're at Epcot now. And the dedication for Epcot is, to all to come to this place of joy, hope, and friendship, welcome. Epcot is inspired by Walt Disney's creative vision. Here, human achievement are celebrated through imagination, wonders of enterprise, and concept of a future that promises new and exciting benefits for all. May Epcot entertain inform and inspire and above all may it instill a new sense of belief and pride in man's ability to shape a world that offers hope and people everywhere so that's the dedication of epcot here is one of our food locations this is the rosen crown pub and this is an area where we needed to enhance the story a bit, so we added 1900s art. When we do food, we actually base it on real food. It's not just artificial. If you look here, this is actually from the um, Mexico Pavilion. At one time, we had an area where you could go and learn about the culture and history of Mexico. And in there, it was very important to tell the story about the food. So what we did with this is we actually had a chef come from Mexico and prepare the food. She came and prepared the food and we prepared the food and we froze it and we took digital photos of it so that we could in fact duplicate it and we sent it off to California and had it duplicated. And that's what you saw in that slide. In fact, what you see right here is one of those pieces. This is actually a molded piece that is an exact duplicate of the real food that was there. Kringle Bakery. Just had a rehab of the Kringle Bakery. Does anybody know what Kringle means? It's a Scandinavian pastry that is shaped like a pretzel. Yeah. Okay, so we just read that recently. And you can see here, to tell the story of the people who inhabit this particular place, on the left you can see it before we added the props, and on the right after we added the props. It has much, much more of a story to it. And once you go inside, you can see the elements that are part of what would have been someone's home and a bakery. We just added this cabinet in there, and you can't just have a cabinet because people don't just have empty cabinets. You need the other pieces to go with it. And so we added important pieces that tell the story of this is someone's home. Now, what's very interesting about Kringla is that when we finished this, the young lady who is from Norway came up to us and she said, I just got back from Norway, and you know what? I was at my grandmother's house. And I'm back here, and you guys did this, and I feel like at my grandmother's house. So it's pretty authentic, because most of those pieces actually came from Norway. Okay, um, 
What we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the props that I have up here. And everyone here is going to get a prize. Isn't that great? Everybody gets a prize. Uh, as you walk out, I have some pirate gold for you. So you get one piece of pirate gold, one each, uh, uh, which is actually something that we used at the Pirates of the Caribbean. So you can take it home with you. Um, does anybody know what this character is or who this character is? Ice Skater. Ice Skater. Where did he come from? Blizzard Beach. Blizzard Beach, exactly. It's a trophy. Now, this actually is a trophy from 1927, but this is now Ice Skater's trophy. So sometimes we buy something and we adapt it or modify it. And here is a 3D print because sometimes we use 3D printing to create props. And sometimes we use artificial food. This is an orange. And it feels like an orange. It does not taste like an orange because it's solid resin. <laughs> this is a piece of, anybody know? It's actually one of our sponsors for Food One. Boars and cheese, exactly, it's boars and cheese. Okay, not edible, but it looks exactly like boars and cheese. And who in the heck is this? Right, this is the alien. Now, what's interesting is sometimes we actually just go buy things and we modify those and put them in because it's better than trying to create this because it already exists. I went and bought this at a store that's no longer open. I know what store that is. Toys R Us, <laughs> I did. I bought a whole series of these at Toys R Us. You can actually find these on our Disney Dream and our Disney Fantasy in the animator's palette. So these are props that I bought and modified, and in fact, he's pretty solid now, except for his antenna. Um, but the idea is that we do this, sometimes we create props from scratch, or make it, or sculpt it, or paint it, and sometimes we actually buy it and modify it. So the whole idea, and there's lots of props up here, and there's one in particular I'd like to share with you before we finish. Somebody know what this is from? Nope. Glass Menagerie. Nope. It's from a Disney television show. Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time. And what is it? It is. It's from uh, uh, Emma Swan's mobile. And she is the daughter of Snow White and Prince Charming. Absolutely. So this is actually a a duplicate of the original one that was used in the film. We had a lot of synergistic opportunities when we did the window of Mr. Gold at the Disney Hollywood Studios. I worked very closely with the production company and all the people who created the real props that were there. And in fact, that was probably one of the most exciting jobs I did was putting props and decorations in that window. So anyway, and this is actually blown glass and all these pieces were custom made. And not only that, I have, this is not the authentic one, but I have Once Upon a Time book, and a postcard from where? Storybrook, Maine. Okay, wow. Yes, okay. So, questions. We got a couple of minutes for questions. Anybody have any questions? Yes. The, vi the base <laughs> in Haunted Mansion. I really thought it was important, and uh, our, our producers and, and uh, creative director says, well, yeah, I don't know. And then I finally convinced them, but that was really six months of calling this guy and saying, hey, do you still have it? He says, you know what? I got other people interested in it. I mean, people do that all the time, right? Well, if you don't buy this car today, it'll be gone. So I followed him for, for six months, and it's like, man, I finally got it. And it's such a cool piece. It's actually from the 1800s. That base is from the 1800s and it actually fits the story. It's not a prop that haphazardly got put into the music room of Haunted Mansion, but it's something that made sense, perfect sense, into what we were telling. Yes? How many people did you have collecting all of the How many people do we have? Where'd they go? No, just kidding. <laughs> um, we, uh, we have, I think, about uh, eight people here in uh, Walt Disney World who do props. We travel around the world when uh, budget allows, not always. Uh, I mean, I was fortunate to spend uh, uh, several weeks in Mexico doing a little project and going from city to city to city and, you know, uh, meeting with artists and uh, creative folks and uh, culinary folks, and it was, it was a lot of fun. But uh, we have eight people that, that do that here. And uh, we were responsible for all of our resorts, our parks, uh, Disney Springs, 
and we also are responsible for uh, the ships, the four ships. And we will do the other three. That, that's, you know, we already know we're building three more ships. Okay. Uh, so we will, we will be doing that as well. So uh, we do a lot of work. Yes? Speaking of budgets. Budgets? Yeah, what's the range of like the least expensive to the most expensive budget that you have ever done for like said prop decoration? Um, hmm. Good question. Okay. We don't want to talk about money. It's irrelevant in terms of a story. I mean, we do, I mean, in all honesty, we do have budgets we work with. And a lot of people think, oh, you're at Disney, you can just do whatever you want. That's not true. You know, we have stockholders. I'm one of them. Okay. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm being very uh, conscientious of what we're doing. Now, everybody knows that when you have a budget, okay, so you may go over the budget or under the budget a little bit. We try to stay on budget, and as much as we can, we do. And, and sometimes a budget may be as, as little as $500 or $1,000 for, hey, you got this shelf, you got $1,000, or you may have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do a whole land or an entire island in the Bahamas. Yes. <laughs> So if we've got a young person out in the audience right now, how would they, what kind of education, what would they do to, uh, to, to work in this area? To work in, in props? Um, what would be a likely path? Well, it's very interesting because uh, everybody's path, I think, at, at Walt Disney Imagineering is a little bit different. We all come from a different way. Some people come from the parks and they actually uh, started their careers working in the parks. And some people came from education, and some people came from uh, our shops. Uh, but for some of us, it's like I, I worked in film, television, and theater. Uh, and I did props, and I did uh, set design and decorating. So that, that was my background, and I certainly would encourage people to do that. And we actually have um, a, a competition called Imaginations which is uh, open for college students in certain areas, um, majors. And so that's certainly a good way to do it. But if you're going to do props, if you're going to do decorating, then you really need to do it and you need to work on theater, work on film, work on television. You need to be involved with that and take classes that will allow you to do that three-dimensionally as well as uh, sculpturally. There's so. a lot of research. A lot of research. A lot of research. Very important that we're authentic. And uh, as you notice here at Epcot, every place you go is pretty authentic wherever you are in what country. When you're in Magic Kingdom, when you're at Animal Kingdom, everything is authentic. It's real. Uh, and some things are mystical and magical and, and, and make believe because that's what we do. But the idea is that uh, we want to make sure that we are telling the right story. What we don't want to do is have a contradiction. So that's why research is so important for us. Because when you have a contradiction, then all of a sudden you've lost your guest or your audience. Like, okay, I don't believe it now. Sort of like when you watch a film and you see something that, uh, it's like, wait a minute, that didn't exist then. So that really messes me up. Yes? How long have you been an Imagineer? How long have I been an Imagineer? Uh, I've been an Imagineer for more than 20 years. And every day is exciting and every day is different. And, uh, and challenging sometimes and every day I get to do something a little bit different and, and my schedule is a little bit different every day it's like I may come in at four o'clock in the morning or midnight or I may come in at uh, two o'clock in the morning or I may come in at eight o'clock usually not <laughs> but, uh, and then I may go home at five or six or seven or, <laughs> depends on the project and sometimes we work seven days a week depends on the project Sometimes you, yes? What are the costumes on this floor? This costume was actually from the um, Kidcot in France. So this is something I worked with our creative costuming department. What's interesting is that uh, a lot of people don't realize that just because you're doing props doesn't mean you, don't, you deal with costumes, because we do. Because it's a prop, it's not what an actor is wearing, it's part of the story. This jacket, anybody know where this jacket might have come from? American Adventure? Nope. Actually, there's another jacket just exactly like that that is in uh, the Pirates League. And if you know the story about the Pirates League, the Pirates came in and took over. 
So they, in fact, that, that was sort of uh, their reminiscent of, hey, we took over and we're going to show you, anybody who comes in, that, hey, we have this place now. See, we shot you. There's the residue. There's your jacket. You're out. We're in. So the pirates are coming. Okay. Yes? Did I have any? I did not. No. But she was imaginary. Yes, she was. She was, but I didn't. I know that Gary might have. <laughs> That's Gary's name. Yes? How was that uh, yellow canister from Monster Sink painted? Is it painted with was enamel? The weathering on it, was that done by hand or was it like a... Machine? Done by hand. Oh, wow. Yep. That's actually really nice. This is actually a piece that's in the, um, the Disney Dream and the Disney Fantasy in Animator's Palette. So it was, I mean, this does not exist in place else. We just had this made. So parts of it were 3D printed. Yeah, so it's fine. It, it's no longer a scream canister. What is it? It's a laugh canister. It's a laugh canister. Okay. This is, a, I know that we're running out of time and we'll go in just a minute, but this is very interesting because this is a piece that is in uh, Alani. So, oh, I forgot, we do Alani too. Uh, but uh, this is actually hanging in, in one of the kiosks because if you go to Hawaii and you go to uh, Oahu and you go to the North Beach, you will see that people have a lot of weird stuff all over. In fact, if you come into my office, there's a lot of weird stuff all over. But the idea is that these were hanging all over in one of those shops. So we had one of our vendors make these for us. It's sort of like a, uh, a, a, an ornament in a cone Okay, but it's actually made out of resin now, so it will hold up, and we actually have these outside. Okay, one more question, and I think we have to let you go, or... Yes? When an attraction is retired, what happens to the props? What happens to the props? Uh, we reuse them sometimes. We salvage them. Um, again, if it makes sense. I have a warehouse several places around property. I have connexes, several places around property. And so when we, in fact, take an attraction down, okay, it's over, we're not using that anymore, we will take these and we will store them. It's like, okay, if there's an opportunity, and it may be five years, 10 years, 20 years later, that we may, in fact, reuse those. If it makes sense, we would do that. Is everything numbered? That would be great. <laughs> okay, I don't think we have a budget for that. Uh, no, and when you're working in film and television, it certainly is. Uh, but we, we, we don't. I mean, uh, we, have, we take pictures of it, so we have a visual representation, but uh, sometimes it's actually not. It's Steve, I just want to say, if, if there's guests in here that have questions, you can meet them right on the outside over here. Absolutely. They can exit out the back, we'll give them their coin, and then they can greet you on the side. Sure. All right? Absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. thank you for joining us here at the Odyssey Festival.